I want everyone to take the like button on a vacation and show it the true power of the dark side, and shockingly expose that you're its father. And if you're feeling a bit spicy, you could perform a slight cutting motion towards their hand. Now onto your irregularly scheduled programming. March 20th, 2220. Governor Fon Pak has won the presidential election, largely thanks to President Baldemi Khan's endorsement. Fon Pak will take office on April 1st and will be the second president of the Zentaran Republic. President Baldemi Khan has decided to retire to private life on Omicron Actinus. April 1st, 2220. Fon Pak is now officially the president. The first order of business is beefing up the defense of Muvak and Omicron Actanis. The first defense fleet has been reduced to 14 corvettes, and the DIA believes the Luck Navy has made it back to their shipyard, and has already started construction of new vessels to replace those destroyed. April 14th, 2220. Official first contact has been made with the state of Chefi. First impressions are that they are fanatical pacifists and spiritualists. President Von Pock has sent an envoy to hopefully improve relations and learn more about the Chefian species. May 22nd, 2220. A routine ecological survey of Omicron Actanis has stumbled upon a strange fungal life form. The science team reports that the surface of the mycelium is shimmering and colorful, but what was most intriguing to them was the fact that separate clusters were seemingly communicating with one another whenever something occurred within a very wide radius. Furthermore, the biology of the organism appears to be clearly alien to the ecosystem of this planet. The science team has requested specialized support as they believe the organism could be sentient. June 12, 2220. The army has sent concerning reports from Omicron Actanis, as further examination of the fungal life form has revealed that it is emitting a signal to somewhere in the galaxy, and they have been unable to determine where. The DIA's analysis indicates that it is completely possible for the life form to be a genetically engineered spy. However, it is worth noting that the organism is exceedingly old, so it was definitely not designed to spy on the Xantaran Republic. The Army and the DIA have quarantined the area, and more specialized scientists are being sent to continue studying the organism. July 6, 2220. Captain Jurgcap and the expedition teams on Fangkor 3 have finished their extensive search of the ruins and found a handful of artifacts, including some small devices, heirlooms, and some cultural artifacts, as well as a single working datapad. Sadly, most of the data has been lost or corrupted, but fortunately they were able to recover at least a small amount of data. August 28th, 2220. Continued analysis of the fungal organism and the signals it sends shows that it is likely part of a network of similar organisms, possibly spanning across the entire galaxy and maybe beyond. Meaning whoever designed these organisms made a galaxy-wide spying network while not much is known about the network, it was discovered that as a part of the network, the organism was receiving signals from other parts of the galaxy as well. Considering several factors, including the volume of data transferred, the scientists believe that the network is only partially active, and might be in a dormant state, but it is far from being destroyed completely. September 3rd, 2220 Established factions and fledgling movements alike have taken unusually keen interest in Omicron Actanis. From the moment the colonization effort started, nearly every political voice had something to say about it. Political analysts don't suspect anything truly radical taking hold, but they do advise caution. It is clear that various political entities intend on campaigning vigorously on the planet. October 11th, 2220 the Science Committee's Physics Department has designed a new more powerful deflector. The new Type 3 deflectors are roughly 33% more effective than the old Type 1 variant. While expensive, it is deemed a worthy investment. The first defense fleet will be fitted with the new deflectors once enough units can be produced and tested. The Strategic Command has also decided to order four new Tomala class corvettes, since alloy production has almost doubled since the beginning of the war. December 7th, 2220. Political analysts have been observing Omicron Actanis with keen interest. 
However, despite feverish campaigning and a lot of recent fuss in the media, they forecast a fairly typical outcome for the planet's future. The analysts do note that despite some fringe elements claiming they have a significant influence, there are no signs that Omicron Actinus is being molded into a hotbed of autocracy. Democracy remains a founding principle on the planet. February 5th, 2221. President Von Apoch has decided to perform an offensive action against the Order of Luck to hopefully convince them that the Centauran Republic will not give up and that the cost of a continued conflict will not be worth it, especially with the recent unrest we've detected on their planets. Director V. Kaltor has been ordered to formulate an attack plan. The director decided to attack and capture the Zimpok Starbase with the first defense fleet. The attack relies on the element of surprise, so that their fleet will not be able to respond in time. If this operation is successful, the army will be sent to occupy the Drajoni colony on Gloomy. February 15th, 2221. Captain Roald Vagas and the primary expedition team found a computer in the factory's assembly lines. The computer seems to be connected to the entire facility, and after a few days, the team was able to bypass the computer's security system. It appears that the projectors produced here have been sent to many different planets. The projectors seem to have been designed for planetary defense by projecting big cities to hide the real ones. Some people also seem to have used the projectors to create holographic images in everyday life. Among the records are coordinates to a planet where the projectors were sent to be sold. The coordinates point to the broken world Chi Pavonius B1 in the Chi Pavonius system. The ZRS Yalturus is being sent there as soon as the expedition teams are ready to leave. September 29th, 2221. The first defense fleet has engaged the Simpok Starbase. Our fleet took heavy damage from their Starbase's coil guns and plasma weaponry, but they were unable to breach our shields before Marines boarded and captured the Starbase. The fleet will bombard military targets on the Kali Glumli. I have implemented very strict restrictions on orbital bombardment by order of the President. When the army arrives, I have been ordered to implement similarly harsh restrictions on their actions. Anyone caught breaking these rules is to be court-martialed and sent back to Muvok immediately. The President has made it abundantly clear that they will not tolerate any acts of vengeance against Jajoni civilians. The army has been outfitted with limited environmental suits since Glumli is a crag world and it is very cold in comparison to the desert feet of Muvok. Glumli also has very high gravity due to its dense planetary core, so they have also been outfitted with exoskeletons to assist with the gravity. November 1st, 2221. The army has landed on Glumli. Resistance was encountered, but it was not as harsh as we had anticipated. Subsequently, all resistance was overcome in just two weeks. Jojoni civilians have been left alone for the most part, and they are allowed to live their lives in almost the same way as before. The only major difference is that they must eat our food, because the planet doesn't make enough to sustain itself and relies on imports. A supply line has been set up from Muvok to keep the planet fed. January 1st, 2222. President Von Pock sent a message to Arch Prophet Mibi requesting formal peace talks, and shockingly, the Arch Prophet agreed, under the condition that the talks be held on their main starbase in the Zeta Grus system. President Von Pock agreed to the terms. The President also personally requested former President Valdemi Khan be the representative of the Zentaran Republic. Director Vikal Tor has expressed serious security concerns, as the fleet will not be allowed to escort the delegation, resulting in the delegation being under the complete control of the Luck military. And if the Drajoni decide to harm any of the delegates, there would be nothing anyone could do about it. The President has decided to continue with the talks, despite the Director's concerns. The talks are set to begin June 1st of this year. Both sides have agreed to cease all offensive actions in the meantime. June 1st, 2222. The Zentaran delegation arrived at the Zeta Cruz Starbase, and former President Valdemir Khan met with their Drajoni representative, Vipsi Krek. After pleasantries were exchanged, the talks began. Valdemir Khan was authorized to give up all occupied territories and give war reparations if required. June 24th, 2222. The peace talks have come to an end. 
former President Valdemir Khan took advantage of the growing unrest on many Luck worlds, and the fact that their fleet was almost completely destroyed in the attack against Muvok, to pressure the Trachoni, as it appeared they wanted the war to be over so they could focus on domestic issues. The main demand of Valdemir Khan was that the Order of Luck must officially recognize the Santoran Republic. In return, the Drajoni wanted a 10-year non-aggression clause in the treaty, so they would not have to worry about Zentaran retaliation. The Drajoni also demanded war reparations in the form of alloys and minerals, but they were willing to cede the Zimpok system and the planet Glummy to the Republic, as long as all Drajoni on the planet were given a reasonable chance to leave. The Drajoni made it abundantly clear that this conflict had no winner, and both sides unanimously agreed to end the conflict instead of having continued bloodshed. Now that the science committee is no longer blocked by the Order of Luck, plans for new science vessels to explore an entirely new section of the galaxy have been proposed for when alloys become available. The planet of Glummy is now under Zentaran rule, and in accordance with the peace treaty, the army and navy have offered assistance to all Drajoni that wish to relocate to another Luck planet. Those who choose to stay are given resident status and the opportunity to apply for citizenship which will be granted as long as they pass a very basic security check. Those who gain citizenship will be able to run for any political office and are eligible to serve in all aspects of the military. Two infantry regiments will remain on the planet. The Drajoni will eventually form their own planetary guard divisions, but the army has been ordered to remain since the planet is on the border of Order of Luck space. Before the war, the planet Glummy had roughly 3.5 billion inhabitants. 1.5 billion of which opted to relocate to another Luck planet, leaving 2 billion on Glummy. Surveys of the remaining population reveal that they stayed for one of three reasons. One, the planet previously had severe food shortages and couldn't get enough food from the Luck government, and the Zentaran government has consistently delivered extra food. Two, the Zentaran Republic is democratic and allows citizens to vote, compared to the Order of Luck where only the religious elite have a say in the government. 3. They originally came to this less populated colony in hopes of getting away from the growing religious extremism on the Core Worlds. December 22nd, 2222. While the Order of Luck is still considered the biggest threat to the Zentaran Republic, funding and resources are being shifted back towards a civilian economy, instead of rushing to rebuild the fleet. Funds are also being pumped into Glummy to repair the damage caused during the occupation and into the creation of new jobs for the Jutoni. A new starbase has been ordered to be constructed in the Omicron Octanus system. The starbase will mainly act as a trade hub, and possibly have a shipyard primarily geared towards civilian shipping, but could be converted to military construction if required. January 4th, 2223. Captain Kanva made a substantial discovery on the star Sazadad O'Clock, Somehow, life composed entirely of plasma has managed to evolve here. Unfortunately, the ZRS Yal Sema cannot venture closer for a better scan as the thermal radiation will eventually become too much for the vessel's deflectors and sensors to handle. October 1st, 2223. Omicron Octanus has very unstable plate tectonics and is prone to severe earthquakes and violent volcanic activity but a group of scientists has requested permission and funding to solve the problem by drilling artificial vents deep into the fault lines, allowing for a periodic release of pressure by letting molten rock and gas spew out, essentially creating artificial mini-volcanoes. After reviewing the request, the science committee approved the idea, leaving the decision to Governor Khan Vigan, which approved the plan under the condition that the Army's Corps of Engineers supervise the drilling. October 22nd, 2223. Parliament has passed the Void Bill, which increases funding for the development of new forms of propulsion, whether that be sublight or faster than light. The bill also increases the amount of funding available for deep space construction projects and their maintenance, meaning the Zentoran Republic now has the funds to support eight total starbases instead of the previous three. February 25th, 2224. Captain Jurgcap has determined that Dohalma 5 was mined by a civilization long ago. There are many artificial cave networks and old abandoned outposts on the planet. The captain believes this could be a good site for an archaeological expedition in the future. November 5th, 2224. 
The science committee has decided not to order any new science vessels, as the state of Chefi has refused our request for free passage. So the Yal Morodan and Yal Sema have been sent to survey the newly accessible section of space. Diplomatic relations with the state of Chefi have stalled due to the fact of the Republic's large standing military and its willingness to use it if required. They are also not the biggest fans of the Republic's democratic form of government. These interactions have apparently convinced them to adopt an isolationist stance towards other spacefaring species. The Strategic Command believes that the Chefi will not be able to withstand the onslaught of a determined enemy, meaning the border with them would be threatened if they were to be attacked. So Director Vikaltor has decided to use some of the funds from the Void Bill to construct a new starbase on the border in the Keso system. April 20th, 2225. The ZRS Poland has found several mining platforms attached to the large asteroid WL78 in the Tozid system. They are held together by chains and hooks. These platforms have several drill arms that can be remotely operated. A small bay has already been carved out of the asteroid for the mined resources until they can be picked up. It appears that whoever started mining this asteroid left in quite a hurry, leaving the platforms surprisingly intact. They should be quite helpful in any future mining operations in the system. June 22nd, 2225. The Strategic Command's listening post on Simpok Station has detected an unknown fleet of ships moving in the Thibernica system. A team of xenobiologists has been assigned to decipher their language, from intercepted communications between the ships. These aliens have been labeled as neutral until proven otherwise. January 12, 2226. The fleet detected in the Thubernica system seems to be some form of expedition across the galaxy. They have not made any hostile moves, and the Strategic Command has not detected any form of heavy weaponry on the vessels. They seem to be broadcasting a repetitive but not particularly content-filled signal on an open frequency. The fleet is traveling through the Order of Lux space and is on course to the Zimpak system. President Fonapak has decided to allow the fleet access to Zentarn space, under close surveillance, and the First Defense Fleet has been put on high alert. January 26, 2226 the Strategic Command has received communications from the Grimachin Combine. They seem to have translated the Zentaran language. First impressions of their culture is that they are authoritarian, militaristic materialists led by Grand Marshal Grubbage Festerflesh. Relations have turned sour quite fast, as they are adamantly opposed to Zentaran egalitarian values, just as Zentarans are opposed to the Grimachin's authoritarian values. July 3rd, 2226. Captain Rald Vagas discovered that Chi Pavonius B1 is not, in fact, a broken world. The captain figured this out by performing a gamma ray test in low orbit, which revealed that it is a projection emanating from a building located in the southern hemisphere. The expedition teams disembark to investigate. While there, the teams unknowingly activated several ancient sentinel droids. The captain was unfortunately killed before the security team could destroy the droids. Captain Raldvagas' first officer, Ilmas Nick, has taken on the role of acting captain for the time being. September 5th, 2226. The engineering department of the science committee has presented designs for a destroyer-sized vessel based on the Order of Luck destroyers. The Vichy class was designed by the Centauran Republic in the mid-2220s to be a destroyer based on the Order of Luck destroyers. At a length of 225 meters and a width of 150 meters, it has a crew complement of 200 spread across 25 decks. The class has four Type 3 deflectors and two inches of nanocomposite armor. It is armed with four Mark 7 fusion missile launchers and one medium coil gun turret. The class is equipped with a fusion reactor, ion thrusters, radar system, and a basic combat computer. November 24th, 2226. The xenobiologists have managed to decipher the confusing and repetitive messages being sent from the unknown alien fleet. The messages were commercial advertisements. Apparently they call themselves the Vengrelin Trium, and are part of a group of space traders that make a living by offering the best deals, or what they call the best deals, to whichever civilization they happen to be visiting at the time. 
Greetings from the Vengralian Trium, certified caravaneer traders of the Caravanzari Caravan Coalition. We bring you exclusive products from the furthest reaches of the galaxy, as reproduced by our shipping factories, at affordable prices. Whenever we enter your territory, we will offer you an exclusive deal. Unfortunately, our ships are all outside your territory for the moment, but we look forward to doing business with you in the future. In the meantime, do not hesitate to contact us, but be aware that all incoming calls will be rerouted to the Caravanzari Caravan Coalition. March 14th, 2227. The Science Committee has had a major breakthrough in stealth technology. Cloaking generators project a field around the vessel, which redirects light and sensors around the field, as if there was nothing there. So you can't see or detect the vessel without specialized equipment, and an extraordinary amount of power required to run it. Unfortunately, this technology comes at a cost of destabilizing other forms of energy fields, like deflectors, so they will be unable to be active at the same time. Currently, there are only plans to install these generators on science vessels, so they can travel anywhere without having to worry about other empires' borders. Unfortunately, this technology is not special, and appears to be a logical progression from other stealth technologies, so other empires will eventually or already have this technology, and the Strategic Command cannot currently detect cloaked vessels in Zentarn space, so this has been made a top priority. July 28th, 2227. The DAA suspects that Parliament official Janak Vun is a Drajoni spy that was surgically altered. This, if true, would be devastating to the Republic's technological advancements, as Janak Vun is the leader of the Technology Approval Subcommittee, which is in charge of approving or rejecting technologies, and deciding whether or not it should be restricted to military use only. The subcommittee also works closely with the Science Committee to direct government funding towards certain research projects. The DIA proved Janak Vun was a surgically altered Jirjoni by using an experimental genetic scanner developed by the DIA for this exact reason. This gave the DIA a probable cause to detain Janak Vun and test their DNA through traditional means, which verified the results. Janak Vun was officially arrested and is in joint custody of the DIA and the Strategic Command, and is being held in an undisclosed location. Janak Vun has been in the government in some form or another since 2205. Almost 25 years of information could have been relayed to the Order of Luck, including detailed schematics of weapons and other classified projects. January 27th, 2228. The state of Sheffi has officially cut off all diplomatic relations, and they have declared the Zintaran Republic an existential threat to the galaxy due to what they call military extremism. Fortunately, they are fanatical pacifists, so the Strategic Command doesn't believe they pose any major threat, at least for the foreseeable future. May 3rd, 2228. On Omicron Actanus, a talented individual named Genak Tor has inspired portions of the colonists with their leadership abilities. Those colonists started giving Genak Tor royal honors at Genak's request. Local authorities describe Genak as a nuisance. Genak Tor welcomed their new authority and encouraged the colonists to sign petitions and protest how the government is running Omicron Actanus. Some of the protests devolved into looting and rioting, requiring the local authorities to arrest multiple people. This problem was elevated to the strategic command because local authorities tried to arrest Genak Tor on charges of accessory to looting and rioting. Genak Tor refused to comply with the warrant and called upon the colonists to protect them, which they did, resulting in an armed standoff. The Strategic Command ordered the Planetary Guard to arrest Genak Tor on charges of felony evasion of arrest and felony unlawful use of force. A non-lethal raid is conducted and Genak Tor was arrested. One officer was non-fatally shot and the shooter was also arrested. During and after the arrest, Genak called for open revolt and rebellion, which added the charge of conspiracy to commit treason. March 12, 2229. The Strategic Command's yearly threat assessment was released, and it showed that the Zentaran Republic is surrounded by unfriendly or hostile neighbors. While Zentarans were originally excited to seek out new life in hopes of finding friends, this hope has started to dwindle significantly, as every species that has been found has disliked Zentarans or absolutely hates them. President Von Pock's first term is coming to an end, and they have made it clear that they are not going to be running for a second term. 
so Phan Pak decided to take the opportunity to reshape the military before stagnation takes hold. President Phan Pak and Director V. Kaltor have worked closely to develop the Unyielding Doctrine, which calls for the defense of the Republic to be handled by exceedingly heavily armed starbases and rapid response forces. While the offensive arm of the military would be handled by multiple medium-sized fleets capable of relatively fast deployment but still packing a significant punch. This doctrine is designed to allow the Centauran Republic to survive a multi-front war long enough to mount a massive counterattack. August 1st, 2229. It is the official start of the presidential election. Although current president Fon Pak could run for a second term, they have decided not to due to health concerns. The two frontrunners are Admiral Ganak Va, who is running for the Democratic Freedom Party, and General Vimas Vikan, who is running for the Victory for All Party. Governor Khan Vigan and Bald Wek are both running as independents, but it is unlikely they will gain any meaningful foothold in the election. October 30th, 2229. Parliament has provided additional funding to support the new Unyielding Doctrine. The Strategic Command has used this funding to construct a new starbase in the Powell system, which is right on the border of the Grimachin Combine. The rest of the funds were used to completely reinforce the 1st Defense Fleet by ordering 12 new Tumala-class corvettes. Plans to start forming a second fleet are underway, and V. Kaltor has announced that the second fleet could be formed within the next few years. Live long and prosper.